Alright guys, back with a new video. Jeez, it's been a while since I posted. Alright, so uh, I am going to be talking about the movie uh, Captain Marvel. Yeah, I actually saw it last week. I was going to do a review, but the thing is, I just wanted to sit down and just have a full review of the whole movie. Like, I'm not just going to make a review about a movie and just talk about bits and pieces. No, I want to talk about the entire movie in this review because... I have a lot to say about this movie. You can all see I didn't really put in my, you know, my Marvel intro because I'm sure most of you are probably getting sick of it. So I just decided to just not put it in just to make this video just, just a bit shorter. But let's talk about the movie. Captain Marvel. I have to be honest, I actually didn't think the movie was that bad. I actually thought the movie was actually pretty good. I actually had like some doubts that this movie would be okay. I actually thought it was going to be a bit trash. But... It surprised me. It it really surprised me. It starts off with uh, Carol Danvers, or in this case, Vers, as her team calls her. Her and um, Jan Rog, played by Jude Law, they're in a fight, like in the beginning, and then they just like talk, have some cheeky banter. She also has cheeky banter with the rest of her team as well, and that was uh, interesting, nice to see. They basically talk about the scrolls, the presumed bad guys of the entire movie, and uh, Captain Marvel basically gets kidnapped by one of the scrolls and they're tapping into her head like to get something and then they come across these memories that she doesn't seem to remember and then she gets out and she's like freaking pummeling them with with that thing attached to her uh with her to her hands yeah just like fighting and she was able to like run and fight and honestly i thought that was pretty cool yeah she's hanging on the ship as the ship like everywhere's broken apart because of you know because of all the fighting and then she just goes down and falls into Blockbuster video. I've actually heard of Blockbusters. It was like very famous in the 90s back then in the USA. Oh my god, there was so much 90s nostalgia in this film. Like I heard 90s songs and also some references. I also saw like a, a book that Stan Lee was reading. You know, showing Stan Lee and his appearance. Rest in peace, Stan Lee. Oh my god. Oh, the intro. Oh, the intro of the thing. It showed just the tributes of Stan Lee and his cameos in the MCU. I'm, I was just like, ah. Oh. To be honest, I was both happy and a bit sad because, like, happy because, like, they're making a tribute to him, but sad because, oh, he's just no longer around. That was nice. It's it's good that they showed it, and yeah, it's just, it was just nice that they showed that. Yeah, ah, oh, crip. What was that? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She lands on Earth, and uh, there's a bit of a funny scene with her and a cop. Ask her what she can like get radio like frequency communication and all that stuff. The dude points to the radio shack. I'm just like, <laughs> nice. Calls her team up. She's just waiting there. Then the authorities get called up. And uh, you see Nick Fury looking all young. It's the CGI. Like, honestly, the CGI is actually... Like, it blows your mind sometimes. Like... You don't notice something CGI until, like, it's pointed out. I also saw Phil Coulson. He's also in uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Actually, he's the lead role. One of the lead roles in Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I watched that show. It's not bad. On season 1, 2, and 3, I am currently going to go on season 4. And hopefully to season 5 and 6. I really have to catch up because, like, I hear there might be a season 7. And, oh my god, I just have so much to catch up on. Yeah, so there's also like a chase scene between Carol Danvers and the scroll. She's like running, catching the scroll, and Nick Fury catches up as well. Yeah, and there's like a huge fight scene, and uh, leads to her like on the train, punches the old lady, turns out to be a scroll, and oh my god. Honestly, I, I knew, I knew the old lady was a scroll. That would just be so awkward if she wasn't. Like, not just that would just be terrible. Anyway, fight scene, chase scene, yada yada yada. Uh... Her and Nick team up. She heads over to, uh, like, not really an abandoned... It look, the bar looks like it hasn't been in it. Like, people haven't gone there for, like, a long time. Her, Nick Fury are there. They talk. They have a funny conversation. Talk, like, Nick Fury asks her if she could prove to him that she's not a scroll. She blasts through the wall. And he's just like, how does that prove that you're not a scroll? Like, and I'm just thinking, exactly how does that prove anything? First of all... At the time, Nick Fury didn't really know anything about, like, space stuff. And, uh, y yeah. Yeah, and then they talk of, like, what to do. And, uh, they basically go to... Oh, my God. I actually forgot the name of this place, but they went somewhere, like, to look into files about this lady, um... Wendy Lawson lady, played by, uh... 
Is it Anit Benin? Anit Benin? I, I, I don't know. Anyway, they go there to find information about her. And then, well, Carol Danvers finds out information, information that she had a life there. Like, in the beginning of the film, you see how she just has, like, all these memories that she can't really pinpoint. She doesn't really understand it. So she sees a photo of her with uh, Wendy Lawson lady. And then she's, like, confused as hell. Just like, what is this? Why am I there? What's going on? And then uh, those, uh, that detective guy, which we find out later, is actually a scroll. Goes and attacks Nick and uh, Carol. It's like a chase scene. They head into one of the planes, and then they take off. And then later on in the film, she then runs into, uh, she then runs into her friend, but she doesn't really remember her. And uh, the whole situation is really awkward. Like the friend and her daughter could remember her, but she couldn't so this this whole situation was super awkward and then they just start to talk about what she was like and how she just doesn't understand this whole like alien thing and stuff and uh then later on the scroll guy comes and uh just talking to him and then we find out later on in the film that the scrolls are not the bad guys they're actually hmm, i don't know if i should say good guys but okay they're not the bad guys we then find out later on that it's the kree that are the bad guys. Like, this is what I saw at first. I thought like, maybe the Kree were the good guys, but then something happened that turned them into the bad guys. But it turns out that the Kree have been the bad guys all along. So, so I was like, hmm, interesting. Carol was just tricked into thinking that she was with the good guys, but in reality, they were part of the bad guys. I wanted to exterminate the, the scrolls. Oh, the cat. Oh, the cat. Oh, the cat is just a meme in that movie. To be honest, I liked the cat. The, 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 cat, the cat was funny. Although, one thing really pissed me off in that movie. When <laughs> Nick Fury was just playing with the cat and then the cat freaking claws him in the eye and I'm just like, no, no. Why, why would, why, who made that decision? Like, seriously. You need to tell me that that cool scar that he has is from a freaking cat. Like, that's so stupid. Of all the things to get that scar from, it's a freak. like, I thought one of the scrolls like clawed his eye out or something, but then I found it's a freaking cat. I'm just like, oh my. To be honest, in ways this kind of diminishes Nick Fury. Like, it just makes him just look so like pathetic right now just to know that that scar is, ugh. <sighs> I'm not gonna lie, that really pissed me off. Anyway. Yeah, and then there's like, uh, like, towards the end, there's like this whole power-up scene of like Captain Marvel just like, you know, just unleashing her ultimate power. You know, like, they show like a montage of her like, doing stuff in life and it, it looks like the stuff always brought her down. But at the end of the day, the stuff really just made her stronger, just brought her up. And it just made her go like super power mode, just go through the, uh... The spaceships, the ones that uh, Ronin controlled. Yeah, it was interesting to see Ronin in the in the film. Not Ronin, Ronan. Yo, from Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, she just just swooshes through and just like bashing all the ships like bam, bam, bam. Just like ooh, epic. Honestly, I expected that, but at the same time, it, it's it's just cool. It's just a cool scene to watch. It was really interesting to see the Tesseract in the film because, like, it was like the first time I ever saw the Tesseract. Uh, Okay, well, to be honest, the first time I ever saw it was in The Avengers, like the first Avengers movie. But then the other time I saw it was in Captain America, the first Avenger. That's where, that's when the Tesseract is like first ever shown on screen. And then like, you know, like from, uh, from first Avenger, Red Skull has it, but then it sw swooshes him up to space. And thinking about it, I don't really know what happened to it since then. So now I know it's just been in a, I, I don't even know how the scrolls got it, like, <sighs> Man, I have to look into this. Yeah, Cat uh, swallows the Tesseract, and then in the end end credits, he pukes it out. I was really annoyed because, like, I waited through, like, I'm, I'm thinking three minutes of the end credits just to see that. I mean, it's really annoying. They did this in Thor Ragnarok, they did it in Ant-Man and the Wasp, and now Captain Marvel. Honestly, Marvel should stop doing this because I may actually just stop watching the, the end credits because it's really getting annoying. Oh, speaking of end credits... The first one was promising. Basically just shows uh, the rest of the Avengers, the remaining ones, and it shows like that beeping color thing that uh, 
Captain Marvel gave Nick Fury at the end of the movie and it just shows like it beeping and then it just stopped beeping and just shows Captain America just looking at the basically the kill count of the entire world well not the entire world, half of the world half of the universe to say the least yeah and then uh, Rhodes comes in tells Cap that the thing stopped beeping and uh, Cap tells him to reboot it again but then Bruce he's just like they don't know what this is but and you know there's just a lot of talk of, like you'll know, reboot it again and just thinking like what's really behind it like Widow turns around and boom Captain Marvel is right there see like when I was in the cinema like she was there and to be honest like I kind of expected that and then many people in the cinema were just like oh she's there she's in it and I'm just like what do you mean of course she's in it she's confirmed for Endgame she's literally confirmed I'm just like huh. I mean like I'm not saying I'm unhappy with that end credit, but it basically just showed something that I expected. Honestly, what many people expected, so it's really nothing new. Yeah, it was nice to see that Captain Marvel and Nick Fury, like, they were basically like partners in this whole film. It was nice to see they had some serious moments, some funny moments, just them bonding, just figuring out what's going to happen next. It's It was just nice to see. Love the cat, but the Nick Fury thing and the cat just really pissed me off. Anyway, Captain Marvel, I give it a 7.5. I would have given it an 8 or a 9 if it wasn't for the stupid cat scene. Anyway, yep, that'll be it for my uh, movie review on Captain Marvel. Please be sure to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video and uh, my review on Avengers Endgame coming out next month in April. Oh, yes. Oh, it's coming, man. It's coming. Anyway, like, subscribe, and peace out.